right away. There's probably no air in this. Yep. Oh, no, there's air, but there's also water. That's never good. Well, that's a first. I don't think I've ever seen a pinhole on a well tank. It seems like this is under pressure. So that must mean that that tank T or the 90 is completely plugged up. And that's why we're not draining out. That's pretty interesting. Well, the T is off. And yet we still have pressure. So. There we go. Look at that pinhole. Make sure you're going the right way. You want to be going into the tank. Thank you. 
Okay, I already see some of you screaming at the screen saying, you're not supposed to use a torch on the poly. Well, you know what? I've been using it heat for a long time to put these things together and I've never had a failure and you really do save yourself a heck of a lot of aggravation trying to wrestle these things on. This is factory set to be a 30-50 pressure switch, but I'm going to increase it. So be very careful because on the back side of this white plastic, when these contacts engage, that will be 120 volts. So you do not want to touch that. You can... Oh, wrong, wrong driver. You can do this one and you're pretty safe because you're in between the two contacts. Show you. So you got these the metal tabs on the back sides here. You want to be careful of that. When you go to the middle spring, you're pretty safe. It's this outer spring where you can run into a problem because you could accidentally hit that metal tab. Now, to increase the pressure, you can increase both the high and the low, or the, the cut in and the cut out pressure by turning this middle spring down. Turning this outer spring down will increase just the high pressure. So we have a 20, uh, 20 PSI differential, which is good. We just want to increase it from a 30-50 switch to a 40-60 switch. So we'll just turn this one down. Drain the pressure off. And if it comes on at 40 PSI and shuts off at 60 PSI, we know we've gotten the correct setting. We gotta keep going a little bit farther. There, just clicked on. I'm actually gonna go a little bit farther just because it was just under 40. Typically, most submersible pumps can handle the 40-60 pressure. Uh, jet pumps are a little bit weaker, so 30-50 is a little bit more common. So you can watch those contacts. Those contacts are made. Now they're off. just under 60 PSI, which is right where we want to be. Watch this again. You can watch those contacts make up once we hit 40. There they go. And we're off. Next thing we want to check is for amperage. So to do that, you get your electrical meter, you hook it around one leg, and you set yourself to amps. And then when it comes on, you'll get an amperage reading. 
depending on what that amperage reading is, it will tell you whether the pump is good or not and what the horsepower is roughly. You have to do a little bit of guesswork, but as long as you know the typical ranges, then you can kind of get an educated guess as to how the pump is operating. So we're at 5.7, which is a very typical reading for a half horsepower pump. If it starts climbing to six, seven, then you know it's on its way out, especially if you see this number spike when it first comes on to like 18 or 19 amps and then drop down to that six, six and a half. Then you know the pump is definitely working hard to start and is working hard while it's running. But this was at five, seven, so that's good. Typical three quarter horsepower pump is more around six and a half, seven horse, uh, six and a half, seven amps rather. Um, and if that spikes, you know, to 23 or 24 amps when it first starts and then runs up to eight or nine, then you know that those pumps are on the way out. But this seems to be running pretty well. So I think they got to this well tank in time and didn't do too much damage to their pump. I just wanna see what this, See, so that actually showed us that it spiked up to about 20 amps when it first kicked on, which is a little bit high, but it's immediately down to 5.6. So once it's on, it's running reasonably well. So that's good. Get our box. That is the finished product. I've not had the option yet to do this either. This is the first one. Look at that. Fancy. Put it right here at the top. Oh. Fancy. Well, flat head and a couple taps with the hammer in that pinhole, and uh, it's more than just a pinhole now. Actually, we're doing it here in the driveway and not uh, in our basement. <laughs>